sustaining life. In this video, we'll be covering generating biochar, processing biochar, inoculating biochar, and applying biochar. Currently, there is a pressing need to process spent biomass from the agricultural sector and in urban or rural areas. Generating clean and renewable methods are a key factor to this need. The CAM group believes that it has all the tools to this package as retort mechanics to generate a valuable agricultural mineral to close the loop. Currently, there are a few options available to process biomass quickly, such as these kilns supplied by Kelpie Wilson's biochar. These kilns were incredibly clean, but and they enhance wood processes by a natural retort mechanic. There are also machines such as this one from Bob's Biomass located in Chowchilla, California that processes woody residues at lightning speeds. You can also dig a hole into the earth and start making char right now, such as Tabor here from the Char Coalition. After this burn is completed, extinguishing must occur simultaneously. Heat must be removed or else the char will turn into ash, leaving us with a wasted effort. This is what you're left with, a high carbon mineral. Utilizing top-down burning in an enclosed space, this will enhance pyrolysis while reducing air pollution. The goal is to keep carbon out of the air and place it back into the soil. You will then be left with a few yards upon utilizing these kilns, and our next step will evolve in how to process this for your purpose. This next step involves what your utility with the char is going to be. Mine is particularly I need it as small as possible. Others don't mind the big bricks. And this method I have come up with, very low tech, comes with three different variants of char to be used. Uh, right now, here's what I'm doing to break this char down into a powder. Let's see, here's the powdery version after it's been sifted and fully uh, processed. This is what I'm after, this kind of powdery char. So what I do is I put it in this little five gallon bucket, smash it, my trusty little shovel here, uh, World War II shovel, doesn't go wrong. Just smash it a bunch of times, and then I pour this in this sieve, boom, and then I just press it down, I go like this until the powder all goes through, and then I do a second sieve process right here. You can see this is um, after it's been sieved in that little guy, I, shaped, I shake it in this other sieve, and then we get a little bit of a shardy powder right here which is, uh, it's pretty decent still. I like to use this, uh, inoculate this and put it in the soils. This is good stuff. But the powdery stuff, I like to put through a drip line. And uh, that's uh, more information to come soon. And then once I sip this all out, then I pour it into here. And then I got a bunch left that uh, either will be re-prialysized or I'll try to keep uh, hammer it down. But at this point, these are really difficult. So I, I don't really bother. I just throw those back into the fire. So, and that's uh, how I deal with that usually. So, but you know, there's other things I can probably do with this that I haven't discovered. But generally, these are the two materials I'm after. This little shardy stuff, and then the powdery, powdery version, which will be hopefully going through a drip line. One of the best ways we figured out to crush this biochar was to use this front loader and just running it over. It turns it into dust pretty quickly, a lot quicker than using the shovel. And also, we know there's more machines out there, such as ball millers, and we just need this to be smaller because we're agricultural based, and we need to, this to go in the soil, and there's many applications when it's powdery like this. Here is the process I utilize to bio to uh, ferment about a hundred pounds, 120 pounds per 55 gallon tote. It just involves getting something to ferment, a fermented base, and then adding microbes to that and letting it sit for a little bit. And you'll see, I'm just pouring a, a good amount of microbes in here just to get this reaction beginning. And it all depends on what type of microbes you want to use and what you're going to be planting. So here's after a few days that's been sitting. I let everything start doing its thing. Let the lacto get all up in there. Let everything just start condensing and consuming and creating new elements and interchanging. 
my Duat soup. And then from there, after the three days are over, I just start adding a biochar to it and mixing it with a shovel. Get it mixed up. It's kind of like mixing concrete. It's heavy. It, you know, it's a tedious process. And, you know, we will be developing easier methods once this grows. And this is just the beginning of, you know, the goal here, which soon I would definitely like to just have a cement mixer and just start tumbling char with the inoculant and then pumping it out and letting it dry. And you'll see the next steps on how I, I work on the drying part. After I show you guys the first day, here's the first day of inoculation. I was sitting for two days. Here's the second day. And then usually by the third day, you're done. It's ready to go. So after the third day, I start putting these things into bags. It's a bit juicy. The formula needs to be perfected, so there's not that much juice, but I like the juice because it makes a really nice fertilizer. So and you'll see the juice coming out of there. And when that stays on the ground, this is what it ends up turning into usually. Just leaves its mark. A lot of mycelium growing on the, the ground here. Some video I took of the residue just from the bag sitting on the ground. You see there's bugs and beetles and all kinds of things just floating around now. So I leave them in the bags for, you know, at least a month. And they continue the process and they start drying out. And when the farmer says, hey, we're going to be using the char in about two weeks or so, I, I get it ready to go. I put it in my truck. And then I put it out on a tarp. And I start letting it dry out a little bit more for the machine that he needs to be using it in. Uh, requires this to be a bit drier. So I'm just putting it on a tarp here, spacing it all out. And then I cover it up because I don't want anything to evaporate out of there. And it's all about what medium you're using to ferment. You want something that's biologically active. I'm always, con I'm always looking for new ways to generate microbes with natural things that are occurring around me and also producing, you know, the bugs that I have using those mediums and the uh, frass and whatnot works really well. And there's so many different things we can use. Like this is spent whey from a dairy. They had no use for this, but I did. And so I fermented it, created more microbes. And then I throw that into the biochar and it's all about the medium you use. You know, what you use is what you're getting out of the char. And this Korean natural farming book is really good in showing ways on how to gather microbes. So when you're applying biochar, some misconceptions, uh, if you can just top dress the biochar in the powder form, it will in itself work into the soil. You don't even need to inoculate it. But in this case I do, I have fertilizer, so I spray it on the top and uh, let it work in and I use some microbes. I'm making an effective microorganism solution here uh, with some FPJ. And then I just take that big old bucket and just splash it all over the place and feed the microbes on the soil and let the reaction begin. Best time to do this is probably in the morning or at night. And here's a garden bed that I applied microbes to. I was in the San Joaquin Valley and I mended the soil with a biochar top dress feed formula that we have engendered here. And it gives us pretty good results. This is the bed with the biochar and the microbes and everything I've been doing. And it's very alive, very good. A lot of weeds. I always leave my weeds and I don't ever pull on my <laughs> bed. And uh, here's the bed without it. And it's just not as much growth, not as much going on here. It doesn't look as impressive. So, and here's some soil that we mixed with the biochar. I love how it looks. It's always fresh smelling. It's a beautiful looking soil. And uh, here's us filling up a hopper to be filled, to be spread, a fertilizer spreader. Uh, you can put the biochar, once it's dried enough, you can use these type of machines and they'll spray your biochar everywhere. So we just take the, it's been drying. You saw what those uh, totes I had next to in that other video. And then we just take that out in the field, fire it up, and we're launching biochar inoculated um, agricultural mineral all over the field. And this is, uh, we did a test strip here, did about 400 pounds. So thanks for watching.